Hello, everyone. Uh, finally, we made this meeting together with uh, Georg. Um, firstly, I, I would I would introduce myself and then hand over to, to Georg. So my name is uh, Ye Hui, and, uh, and uh, this is Georg. Hi. Please. Yeah. So sometimes when we are in open source, we hear the sentiment that hey we released a new version and it was it was like magic no idea how it happened like there's so much going on in open source communities and open source projects that sometimes goes unnoticed and so many people involved that we just don't know what everyone is doing and this is a motivation for for what we want to solve and where we need to have metrics and insights for before we jump in, let's um, <laughs> explain why, who we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just introduce ourselves, our background, right? Yeah. So firstly, I formally to introduce my, myself again, right? So hi, uh, my name is Yi Hui, uh, from China. Currently, I'm working at Huawei as a developer in the Open Source Content Center. So. Uh, I'm also an active contributor in Chaos community. My focus area is uh, it's about uh, open source uh, community uh, health measurement. So I'm super interested on the metrics and the metrics model. I guess why I'm come here together with the Chaos, uh, with the with, with, uh, Georg, sorry. Yeah, and I'm Georg Ling. I'm a co-founder of the Chaos Project. I currently work at the Biturgia as the director of sales. And yeah, it, it's really great to have Yui uh, working with us on a lot of the things that we'll show you today. Uh -huh. And we come at looking at open source projects from a perspective of wanting to understand project health, which we can define as the potential to continue developing quality software. So is an open source project set up correctly with everything that it needs to continue producing the quality software that we need? And we can understand project health by looking at the people involved, the practices around the creation of software, and the performance within the procedures and processes that they have. And within the Chaos Project, we have several we have had many conversations about how do we go about doing this. Uh, the fundamental idea is in open source, we are working in the open. Everything we do is transparent. There's a Git log, there's a mailing list archive. Everything is public data of what we have been doing. So we can take this trace data and make sense of it. So we need some tools to create metrics and then we get the insights about project health. But <laughs> before we go there, there is a word of caution because it's like drinking from a fire hose of data. There's so much. And so we have, yeah. Yeah, we have developed some recommendations before we get started. Yeah. One is use the goal question metric approach. First decide on the goals for the community or why you're looking at an open source community, then ask meaningful questions for reaching those goals. And then only then look at the metrics that actually help you answer the questions you need to make meaningful decisions. Also the metrics, don't look at metrics for the sake of metrics, tell a story. Metrics are living in the context of a community and they can help us tell the story of the community and they can support that story and make sure that you know we're telling the right story and not just making things up so think of metrics as a tool for telling stories and then with regards to the community be transparent about analyzing the data let people know that yes we are looking at the git log at the mailing list archive and so on so that they're not surprised and especially with recent regulations coming out like the european general data regulation 
right? GDPR, that's the short. I, I messed up the yeah. name. <laughs> uh, we really need to be putting the our contributors at the center of this and make sure that they are aware that this is happening. Yeah. And project health, healthy projects depend on people. So as we're looking at projects, think about the people and how they are feeling and make sure that they are well and okay in the project. And I'm going to hand it over to Yuhui to talk more about metrics and how in the chaos project we're thinking about metrics. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So last last month, October, you know, chaos community just released the latest version, including like 17 metrics uh, with, uh, I guess it's 14 new metrics. It's huge number, right? So it's, um, it's kind of, I, I mean, it's kind of hard for, for the people who who never know chaos metrics before to get started using the metrics. So why why don't we just adapt those metrics into some um, use case or scenarios, just like uh, Georg mentioned, the stories. So we describe the different uh, scenarios and use case as a story that uh, happened in the open source community. But here, it's, it's kind of like a, a typical development flow usually happened in the open source community start from create a new issue ended by merge the code so in each of this single touch point we, we could insert our metrics metrics into this touch point we know okay uh, who are the first uh, what's the first response uh, time and uh, what's the average close time for the issues or prs so we use user stories or stories happened in the open source communities to describe our uh, metrics usage. That's why we introduce our metrics model here in community. And metric models are really something we've just now started to put together. And I'm super excited yeah. about them because they're like use cases for metrics. It's really exactly. amazing. Yeah. So for, for Getting metrics, we also have some tooling in the Chaos project. Grimoire Lab is is the older one of the tools that we have. It's it has solved the problems of collecting data from open source projects and processing that data and making it useful and providing meaningful visualizations. And Grimoire Lab is has become an industry standard for looking at open source communities. And we can go more of, of, of into examples of where all Grimoire Lab is being used. But for today, we want to talk about how we can use Grimoire Lab with Gitti. Yes. Um, so as you know that um, uh, Gitti is a, it's a very popular uh, code man management platform in China. So that's why we would like we, we are looking for some uh, measurement platform to to support to uh, uh, gather the data from from the Gitty and together with other data. So uh, this is the basic flow to inject the data from Gitty and uh, we handling the data character uh, character metrics. I mean the metrics getting from chaos and create visualizations using dashboard and finally so. Uh, we did uh, integrate Git support with uh, uh, Green Lab. So uh, I can explain that in the next page. Yeah. Really cool slides. Yeah. Very colorful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so as you know, that the community is not just code, right? It's, it's about people, it's about communication, and it means a lot of things, other things. So that's why. We are looking for some measurement platform, not just uh, supporting the the, the, the code uh, collection. It's also about uh, some uh, uh, data sources like a uh, chart platform and uh, and uh, issue tracking pla platform, management management platform. So here you can see that Green Lab has already uh, support uh, lots of uh, data sources as backend like a discourse like uh, together with GitHub, GitLab. So that's why we choose the Gitty uh, to 
integrate with uh, with Grim Live here. You can see that. And then, of course, we will use the chaos metrics to to calculate our uh, data upon that. And based on that, we finally to display the data insights through the visualizations on the dashboard. And we'll show some examples for for these visualizations here in a little bit. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. This is the Green Lab component workflow uh, together with GT. You can see that basically uh, the Green Lab have several component. We can, we can divide the several steps uh, together with the data handling. The first of all, we use in Perceval, uh, the one component from Green Lab to fetching and gathering the data from data sources. Uh, for example, from GT, from Slide, from any other data sources. And, and then we just using the Grim Lab, a Grim ERK to store our data into the database that you can like search or any other database. Meanwhile, we also manage the identities uh, using the sorting height. For example, if two people, if one people have two emails uh, coming from the different data, uh, data sources, we can, we can merge them together into the one people. That's quite cool. So I, and, and the, we step into the next step so we have to analysis our data. How to analysis? We using chaos metrics to calculate our data to generate like a, like merge, PR merge, average time, issue response time, something like that. And finally, we are do some insights. Insights we are using some very cool visualization uh, platform and the display on the dashboard. As Gail mentioned, we will show it later. Yeah, yeah. The next, the this slide, I, 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 I will quickly go through how to use the uh, Google Map together with the GT. It's quite simple actually. I we have a right in the wiki page on the GitHub. You can go through it. I have put the reference link in the last slide, if I remember correctly. Yes, we have that. <laughs> okay, please. Okay, first we have to set up our uh, <coughs> environment, uh, development environment like gate, Docker, and Docker Compose. And run the Docker Compose, we have put it ready for you. It's a set up the, uh, the database. And then you can build the Grim Lab source code. And it's a really friendly, uh, user uh, development friendly for the developers. So we can we can use that to, uh, means, meanwhile, you can also add more features through this way. So you, then you, you can install the gate Data modules, uh, we put it the link on the wiki page, and finally you can run your map with Getty, and uh, you can start getting the data you configured in the configuration uh, configuration file, and fetching the issues, pull request, and the get commit message, and the other uh, data data you can collect from the Getty. It's really cool. And if you have any questions, Yuhui is the one who built this, so open an issue or ping him on Slack. Uh, I'm yeah. sure Yui would be happy to help. Of course, of course, definitely. So let's look at some examples of visualizations from Giti data. Mm -hmm. And what, what can we learn from them? And let's focus on the people, practices, and performance side. So mm -hmm. well, let's, let's start with people. Uh -huh. This is uh, a network diagram where each of the dots is a contributor in mm -hmm. an open source community. In this case, it's the chaos community. And mm -hmm. each of the blue rectangles, if we were to zoom in, we can read it's a repository name. Yeah. And if there is a line between a dot and a rectangle, that means a person has contributed to that repository. Yeah. And we can see here the composition of the community. Where are people active and where are wh where's the activity happening? How are they related? And who are the people that are connecting the different parts of our community? Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it makes me think, think of it as uh, like something like a social network in the open source community. It's connect everything together as a network. 
because say if the node is uh, is larger means this guy is contribute more in this project. It's and you can find the different con connections between different uh, uh, communities and re repositories. You can find this relationship, and you can find more interesting ideas after after you set up the whole network. Yes, absolutely. One thing we can also look at is how organizations are involved in open source projects. Um, for for the this information, we need to make sure of each attributor a uh, contributor we actually have an affiliation set up. So in the sorting hat module of Grimoire Lab, we can go in and say, hey, this person works for Huawei or Peturgia. Mm -hmm. And if, if they use the work email, we can auto automatically assign that. Yeah. Otherwise, if they just use a generic email address like Gmail, it's, it's harder to know. But once you know your community members, you can you can manage that information and then you get insights to how active are different organizations through their employees in our open source projects. Okay. For practices, one thing we might be interested in is where is the activity happening across different modules, across different repositories, and who are the most active um, people there so we can yeah. identify who are the maintainers of a specific part of our community or is there a part of the community or the project that is being neglected where we haven't seen any activity in a while so this heat map for example can can help us understand this yep yeah, yep yeah. and then and, and all, yeah go for it yeah. Yeah, and also you can find the most active the project and together with the people from this heat map. It's really cool to call for called co-contributors uh, from all those repos, repos. It's kind of like star from the GitHub, right? Yeah, it is. And then finally for performance, one thing we might be interested in is how long does it take for us to respond to issues or pull requests, and how long does it take to actually close them? If you yeah. go back to okay. the metric model, those were some of the metrics that that we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, I can, I can find a lot of metrics in the evolution focus areas. It's all about development process happened in the open source uh, communities, like issue re re related metrics, uh, pull request. Of course, we call it, we also call it change request in the like something like that, but but it's really cool. Uh, I, I, we already use that to compare the two similar uh, uh, community to see. Okay, your average close time is two days. Mine is one day. It's super cool. <laughs> and it's also important for the health of a community because if you have people coming to your community and they don't get a response on their issues or pull requests, mm -hmm. then they forget about it, they lose okay. interest, they, they no longer come back. And so you lose yeah. that opportunity of engaging them. Yeah. So have this in mind and keep track of how your community is doing. Yeah. This brings us to the end of what we wanted to talk <laughs> about. And here are some things, a gift to you. Of on course, thank you. Yeah, the first the two slides is about uh, Gitty uh, and uh, Groom Lab. It's a big set of the, the organization on GitHub. It's uh, stored everything about uh, this integration solutions. You can you can get it. And the second uh, link is about chaos metrics. We just we talk a lot in the presentation. We have seventy metrics in the chaos community. Just use it. It's very helpful. And the chaos cost, I think, Georg, you, you may have more experiences on that. <laughs> yes, I, I'm the lead organizer for our podcast. And uh -huh. we bring people onto the podcast to talk about their experiences and their use cases with measuring open source community health. And this is where you can learn how do people in different companies at different in different places and for different use cases use metrics and make meaningful decisions with that so the chaos 
podcast is really a great place to to just listen to what others are doing with metrics in open source. It's really cool. I listen a lot of episodes. It's uh, I can hear many people from different organizations and communities. It's it's shared with us a lot of experiences happened in, in the in the in the community. It's really interesting. Yeah, and I think even so one one thing we're currently in conversations about is starting up a Chinese version of our podcast. So uh, yeah. that is something that you may want to look out for. Yeah, we also uh, we also do some ch- uh, chaos cast in uh, speaking Chinese and uh, and in the future we will provide more episode about it. Uh, we will uh, show it uh, later in our chaos community. You will see that. Absolutely. And then finally, come join us. We have weekly calls. We have bi-weekly calls. There are many different working groups to get engaged in. Go to our website, chaos.community slash participate. And we have a calendar. The meetings are usually Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, So we keep, you know, no one wants to meet on Mondays or Fridays. (laughs) But that's the take of a one you can trust you. It's, it's, It's a lot of meetings. Yeah, there's a lot to get involved in and join. So we'd love to see you there. Yeah. Summing up, concluding this uh, conversation, thank you so much for joining us. We have talked about what is project health and why we need to understand people, practice, and performance. Uh, Mm -hmm. We have shown Grimoire Lab and Gitty support that you can use to look at your open source projects on Gitty. We've shown some example metrics so you can start looking at your data. And we've shared some best practices around using the goal question metric approach, telling stories around metrics, and you know, just get started. There's a lot to look at, but just start slow, one metric at a time, make better sense of the community, and then you can always improve from there. That's true. Okay, thank you, everyone. So, I think we still have ten minutes or fifty minutes, like uh, question and answer part, right? So, if you have any questions about uh, Green Mind, about Chaos, about uh, uh, Green Mind with Gitty, you can you can uh, tell us. We we can try try our best to answer those questions. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good rest of your conference. Thank you. Bye-bye.